exactly what the formula is, but that does give us numbers. The GPA that we use is your adjusted GPA. So you receive your GPA from your school, and then we adjust that upward based on your Barron's ranking. And Barron's is a company that ranks schools nationwide and puts them into categories for most competitive, highly competitive, very, and so on. And currently, for this year, Clemson is ranked in the highly competitive category, which is very good for you because that will take your final ranking and or your final GPA and bring it up a considerable bit. It could be as high, I think, I can't remember exactly for highly competitive, but I think it's, oh, it's 0.5. Yeah, I was going to say at least 0.25, so that's even better news. 0.5, that's pretty remarkable. So you're very lucky to be Clemson students. Okay, so when we get this formula, then we begin to, uh, we begin to invite students in. So students will ask, you know, does it look bad if I take MCATs over and over again? I will tell you it looks bad if you don't, if you have a low score. Because the committee will say, why did the student take MCAT, you know, as early as they possibly could, get a low score, and then never come back and take it again? The committee will, it will read that as meaning you're not fully committed to the process. So, uh, don't worry about, let's say you get a 29 on your MCAT and you're not happy with that, you want more of a comfort zone, but you're afraid to take it again for fear you get a lower score. Take it again because we will only use your highest score, okay? And chances are you'll improve and then you'll better your number and you'll get that interview. Okay, so don't be afraid to take MCAT over again. All right, the next slide. So this year, uh, and in past years, we have interviewed 425 students. That's a lot of interviewing. And you will, when you find out that you're interviewing, you'll then be told that you will interview with three people. When you come to, to the university, you'll start out in the dean's office where you'll hear from the financial aid people, you'll hear from uh, all of the people who provide various academic and social resources for students. You'll hear from me about our curriculum and what to expect from uh, the director of admissions and so on. And after that short orientation, you'll then go to your interviews. And each applicant has three interviews. One will be an outside physician. And we have many good interviewers in the Clemson area who love interviewing Clemson students for MUSC. They're MUSC alumni. And so uh, many times your, your interview, your physician interview, will involve a physician in the area, which is really nice for you, and that will occur on a day that's separate from your interview day at MUSC. So when you come down for your interview, you'll in, you will interview with two other individuals. It could be PhDs, it could be MDs, it could be psychologists, on, but all faculty members. And one of those individuals will have a position on the admissions committee the other will be an interviewer, but not a member of the committee. We have a pool of interviewers that we use. So the person who is on the committee is the person that will probably represent you during our admissions committee itself. And when we meet monthly, we look at all of the reports that have been generated by the interview process, combining that with the initial MCAT and GPA data, and we discuss nearly every student, okay? Now, the people who have the high, high numbers and they make the, the cutoff, 
we also discuss you because we ask all of our admissions folks, were there any things that troubled you about this applicant? So what I'm trying to tell you is you can have the numbers because, you know, you have a 4.5 average and you have a 36 MCAT score, but if you came into the interview and I had an experience where a young man from Duke came in and swore the whole time during the interview, he used profanity. Now, I have to admit, I've dropped something on my toe and had a word or two, but <laughs> never, never would I have thought to use those same words with a faculty member when I was interviewing for medical school. That young man is not a student at MUSC. Okay. So, so the, I'm trying to tell you, it's more than just the numbers. The interview itself is extremely important. I'll show you how that leads to numbers, but it's you're making an impression on someone who's going to represent you to the whole committee. So your, your interaction and the rapport that you have with that person is just critical, okay? And the good news is we have a lot of great people who interview for us, and they're not, they're not mean-spirited people. And mostly everyone who walks away from the interview process at MUSC says, that was really enjoyable. You know, I, had, I really enjoyed the people I talked with. Oh, and I failed to mention that we have students on our admissions committee, and they are full voting members, like any other faculty member is, and you may interview with a student. Do not take that interview lightly because it's a student, because that means just as much as if you interview with a dean or whatever, or an associate or assistant professor, okay? So don't forget that that's very important. All right, so we have started our general interviews. We started in September, and as I said, depending on the number of qualified applicants, we will continue perhaps through the middle of April. The next slide. Okay, now the interview. We get numbers from the interview. When you interview with each of your three people, they have a standard form. And they're going to be interviewing you, and we place those results in two different categories. And one of them falls under traits, characteristics. And these are the things that we rank you on. And the ranking is one to five, okay? One is principles. What does that mean? Do you inspire confidence, uh, integrity? If you are too timid or don't, can't clearly articulate why you're there or what draws you to medicine, you're not going to be very inspiring, are you? You're not going to give us confidence that you've really looked into this and you have a true desire to have a life in medicine. So you have to articulate your desire, certainly. Judgment. Are you logical in your thinking? Are you mentally quick? I remember interviewing a young woman and I asked her something like, um, why did she choose to major in this or that? And she started crying. Well, I, I never had anyone cry in an interview before, but so I didn't know what to do. But, but clearly, uh, I don't know, she was bright, you know, but but you hardly know what to do with that. So just remember that the people who are interviewing you want you to do well. They're doing everything they can do to make sure that you have a good and solid interview experience. So feel free and easy so that you can think. When they ask you questions, don't feel as though they're trying to catch you because that truly is not the case. Instead, truly think about the question and give them your best answer. Empathy. Empathy is important. We know that most people who go to medical school do so because they want to help people. Uh, and yet, the process of medical education tires you out so, and things happen, and it's well known in medical, among medical educators that by the time you're finished with four years, 
you have less empathy than you started with, which is truly a tragedy. So here's the message. You've got to start with some, because if you start with no empathy, I can tell you, you are not going to be a physician that I want to go to or that I would send my family members to. So we're really looking for compassion, real compassion. Someone who is concerned about others. Not If they ask you what you think you're interested in and you say, well, I really want anesthesia because, you know, I hear you can make the big bucks fast. Also something someone has told me in an interview. That's not going to make a good impression, okay? Uh, if you want to do anesthesia, say yes, but then say why, you know? Uh, there has to be other reasons. Ego. Emotionally stable, able to take criticism, aware of strengths and weaknesses. And I think that's a huge part of this, this last thing, aware of strengths and weaknesses. Today in our class earlier, Dr. Smith asked a person how he did on a quiz, and he said, oh, not very well. And the student across from him said, well, at least he's honest. And I thought to myself, that's the category that I'm talking about. You know. It's all right not to be stellar in a particular area, but if you think you are, that's a big problem, you know. And so if you have deficiencies in your record, okay, it's much better for you to acknowledge those to your interviewer. You know, you want to say, you know, I, I didn't have a great start in my sophomore year. A few things happened, and I didn't do my best. But I think I've made up for that. My grades improved after I had this little shift. And I, I really feel as though I, I was back on track. You see what I'm saying? That shows that you have a good feeling for where you are and where you've been. And interviewers want that. Okay? They want you to be able to look at yourself and know when what your strengths and weaknesses are. Why is it? Because the physician who doesn't know his, his or her strengths and weaknesses will kill people because they won't ask for help. Okay? And believe it or not, we think. We really do. <laughs> we think and translate these things to what is this person going to be like when they're actually practicing medicine. Motivation. Again, have you done? If you've got a 27 MCAT and you took it nine months ago and the interviewer says, why haven't you taken the MCAT? And you say, well, I really hate standardized exams. I just don't want to be bothered with it. Not a good answer. Not a good answer. If you can't afford to take it again, that's an honest answer and much better received than, I just don't like to take those kind of tests. They will question, well then, you know, what is it you're only going to do this if it's easy to get in? Because medical school isn't easy. So they're looking for someone who, who has persistence and perseverance, is serious. Personality. You know, you just have to be yourself. You know, you really do. Uh, you have to believe that you would not be this far if you weren't a pretty good person, you know. And so you don't have to be artificial. You don't have to have a, a list of answers that you imagine you might be asked. You just have to be yourself. And we want people who communicate well with others, uh, who are good listeners, who are just generally good people. That's what we want in medical school. So it's as simple as that. Be easy with yourself and, and let us see you for who you are. And, and in all cases, that's always a, almost, almost always a really great thing. Okay, the next slide. So that's one thing. Now here's the other category. Yes, sir. Are there, uh, is there an interview process for physical therapy? Yes, yes, I'm sure there is. Uh-huh, that's a different college, and I don't know exactly how they interview. Uh, Marcel, do you know? I just saw Marcel, my, my helper here, come in the back. And do, Are you familiar with the physical therapy program? No, I'm not, but I, I do have a direct contact. Okay, great. 
Great. So we can get you some more information before you leave. Uh, the interview. Uh, the